501c3 tax exempt community facing do tank. Uh, we're about turning the knowledge into action. Um, our, our, our goal is to uh, enhance and deepen work around grassroots democracy, civic engagement, and social justice through tool building, collaboration, research, and the kind of work that we're gonna share with you. Um, we originate and build tools for civic investigation and uh, collaboration. And I guess I could say our, our elevator pitch would be uh, that we seek to expand civic imagination about what's possible for Chicago's future. And then we help to recruit, develop, and inform new leaders to take us to that future. And uh, as some great people have said, you can't be what you can't see and you can't do what you can't know. And so Civic Lab has been in the, in the field for about seven years. Um, uh, the website that we have open to the public is tiffreports.com. And if you're interested in any of this stuff, we invite you to go to that space and peruse the mountains of data, videos, all kinds of information that we've placed there uh, since uh, the work began, including the training videos that uh, we crowdfunded for. And they're about 16 minutes, and one's about 18 minutes. And it, it's, you know, it's pretty tight and strangely entertaining. Our purpose here is to explain to you a little bit about what TIFFs are. And I could just say, I, uh, if you know a, a lot, I can skip through this part. So would you like me to proceed with an explanation of how TIFFs work? I'm actually very familiar, but Marcus. <laughs> I'm familiar too. Um, oh, you with, are. All right then. As well, so. All right, so I can fly through this. You know then that the TIFFs uh, extract property tax dollars from the boundaries of the designated TIF district. Um, and this is an example we use from a real TIF in the Midwest, TIF uh, over in uh, West Lawndale. Uh, and so you know that the TIF money that's extracted um, over the base goes into the TIF kitty bank. So that's that uh, light yellow triangle, the famous increment. Um, and so the thing to, that we like to, to, to call out is the money that is extracted from the TIF district does not go to the units of government that um, require those TIFs, those, that property tax dollars to operate. Another way we say it is the base uh, property taxes that are collected inside TIF districts that uh, remain for the use of government goes uh, to our budgets and they are on the books. But the money that goes uh, from the increment into the TIF system is off the books and is controlled by the mayor, in this case, obviously, Mayor Lightfoot, but whatever, whoever your local mayor is, that is the person that's controlling that piggy bank. And just to remind us, you know, how, how it works here, um, our local schools are the number one recipient of property tax dollars and in an aggressive state like Illinois, uh, which is, does not have a progressive income tax, our local schools are so desperately dependent on property taxes which we think is also uh, an issue of social justice. So we think it's unfair, but that's the reality. But it means that we have to be very mindful of anything that takes a dollar of property tax away from the units of government that should get them. Now, a TIF is created in the state of Illinois according to a complex set of uh, statutes. But basically, if you can prove some of the factors in this menu, congratulations, you have a TIF. And they have to do with the word blight. And honestly, we could probably stop here and spend the rest of our afternoon discussing who blighted who in America and in, in America's cities. But nevertheless, if you can show that your community has um, significant aspects of aging, obsolescence, code violations, vacancies, and overcrowding, you're well on the way to establishing that your community or some part of it is blighted and therefore may get a tiff. Uh, and the TIF, of course, is to create economic development. That's the whole idea, to create new things where there were no things, new jobs where there were no jobs, some new housing, some perhaps new shopping malls, et cetera. And of course, these projects can be, uh, are often uh, privately owned. So we're talking about gifting property taxes to private business, uh, by and large. Um, in the County of Cook, we've got uh, three, 444 TIF districts in 2019, uh, of which 140 of them are in the city of Chicago. 
it's out of control. So it's about 30% of the entire city is in a TIF. And across the count, the rest of the county, it's about 90 municipalities. So you can see how widespread the TIFs are in the county of Cook. And like the Frankenstein monster that was created to supposedly serve uh, mankind, you know, the scientist said, don't worry, I got it under control. The next thing you know, he bursts his chains, he tramples the village, he sets it on fire, and oh my goodness, it's not good. There are 140 active TIFs in 2019 in Chicago. They stole $684 million. That's how much property taxes did not get to the units of government that were supposed to receive those taxes. This is just one year. And since TIFs came to Chicago, we're talking about $10 billion have gone missing in this way. You can see the rapid rise of TIFs from 1989, which is when Mayor Daley II came into power. Uh, and you can see the revenues going up, up, and up. So this, again, is the, the trend history of TIFs in Chicago, uh, ending with the uh, 2018 year that I have on this particular chart. So you can see it's a big deal. And we think it's, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a loaded uh, political issue. It, ha it's, it reeks with power and, and privilege. And um, it seems to be immune to reform. The seven years that we've spent investigating TIFs, um, you know, have made us very familiar with, with these numbers. But honestly, most people in the city of Chicago do not know any of the things that we're talking about right now. The biggest thing that the TIF Illumination Project that, uh, that we operate performs for the people of Chicago is to reveal at the end of every year how much money which again is property taxes, is sitting in the TIF accounts. So these again, it's just property tax dollars sitting passively in bank accounts at the end of the calendar year. And at the end of 2019, the answer was $1.8 billion. So this again is a number that most people have never heard of before. The mayor will admit to this and claim that none of that is available for use, and we, of course, dispute that. Um, so when you hear uh, social justice people talking about where's our TIF money, or the, the teachers union, or grassroots collaborative, or any number of uh, players asking where the TIF money is, they're directly quoting us and citing us in our research, though they may not actually mention us. Now, in the village of Maywood, where uh, Reverend is, is, is uh, uh, working, um, there are three TIFs that are present that are uh, need to be addressed. And at the end of 2018, those three TIFs had almost $13 million in them, which is about 25% of the entire budget of the village of Maywood. And I would, I would wonder if the average person in the village of Maywood knows that, especially if you're facing any service lapses, uh, uh, crises in COVID, uh, needs in your public uh, educational system. Uh, what is the narrative that's happening in that community right now about um, access to resources? Because you know what we're hearing in Chicago is that we're broke and it's 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 tough sledding. But the state of Illinois, uh, there are about um, oh 1,300 TIF districts all across the, the, the state, uh, about 560 municipalities. So this is not just a thing centered on Cook County. This is a um, statewide thing. And uh, according to our calculations, TIFs have stolen $22 billion across the state. So this is a, this is a huge um, civic issue. Sadly, there is no national count. We estimate that there could be as many as 20,000 TIF districts operating presently in America, extracting $40 billion annually which means that America's public schools are being robbed of about $20 billion conservatively each and every year. And of course, where does all that money flow to? Well, we can have a separate conversation about the merits of taking that money away from public use and giving it to private um, developers uh, who um, are, are then connected to the local political ecosystem. So here are the few policy uh, problems that we would have, have identified that we want to lay out for your consideration. The first is I've already mentioned the TIFs starve local government. 
So um, we care about our public uh, you, in, entities. They're vital for our communities, especially our communities of color. And so when a dollar of property tax goes missing, as I said, in the city of Chicago, the schools miss 56 cents, but the city of Chicago loses 18 cents. So these are significant numbers that impact our ability to deliver essential services. The definition of blight, according to the statute, is meaningless. These are a few of the projects that have been funded by TIFs in Chicago. We have a long list. $842 million were spent on high-rise projects in the loop. Giant buildings that cost 50 to $100 million were lavishly supported under the Daly and Emanuel administrations. Um, not too far, far from where I live in, La in Lincoln Park, which is a well-to-do community, the uh, Grossinger Superstore got almost $9 million in TIF money to renovate it. And it's right across the street from the Apple Store, uh, across the street from a Charles Schwab stock marketplace, and the Steppenwolf Theater. Uh, so it's completely, um, the word in blight is elastic and virtually anything or any place in the state of Illinois can be designated as blighted and receive TIF money, and it has. Uh, TIFs bolster and, and further economic inequity and segregation. This is a key point, my friends. TIFs are anti-distributional. And the heat map, which came from the Chicago Reporter, shows the where TIFs are spending lavishly are in the central loop area. And it makes sense. If you put a, uh, an entity on a community that's capturing property tax rise and saying to those people in the community, this is going to save you, and it's a poor community, it's a bad deal for them. Property taxes are not rising in our, many of our uh, distressed communities. Quite contrary. We have most homes underwater in America are in Chicago, and they happen to be in black and brown communities. No, it's quite the opposite. TIFs handcuff money in communities that are already affluent. And um, we have TIFs in the West Loop and the South Loop, and all you have to do is just look at their balance sheets. And those communities are flush with cash, and that money cannot find its way to um, in places far away from those, from those locations. Uh, this is just an example of what I meant by the TIF money in the West Loop in the Loop area. Uh, PepsiCo's headquarters, $11 million. Conversion of an office tower into condos, $54 million. Conversion of an office tower into the hotel, $5 million. Also, we say TIFs are corrupting. Um, we know it's, it's, it's a sad story. Uh, Chicago is the most corrupt city in America. Illinois sent two governors to prison. It's a pay-to-play state. It's hardly worth talking about, you might say. But when TIFs come to town, local leaders profit from them. So these are just four uh, aldermen at random that I've looked at in the last three years, who all received lavish money from people who received TIFs in their wards. And we say that's immoral. It may be legal, but it's immoral and corrupting. And um, Alderman Ed Burke, the most powerful man in the Chicago City Council, is indicted and will go to prison. And this is from the transcript from the FBI wiretap. The person that he's putting the touch on saying, um, I need his favor for my TIF money. That's what the, that's what the uh, person who's trying to bribe the alderman said. That was, that's what he said on the federal wiretap. So for that reason, um, we believe TIFs are unjust and racist, and we are, we, we are calling for their abolition.